They're zany, offbeat, a little quirky, and they do their own dance moves. Dressed in their nerdy yellow shirts and skinny ties, they symbolize the sounds of science like no other music group can. They are the Amoeba People. Based in Lakewood, California, which was named the most boring city in the state. Volcano. And rest assured, this music is anything but boring. Ray Hedgepeth, the band's lyricist and guitarist, formed the band in 2010, but only after first testing out his science songs on his elementary school students. So Continental Drift started as me literally trying to get a group of sixth graders interested in their textbook. Uh, we were learning about Continental Drift, and the first line of the song, which is... In the year of 1910, there was a scientist whose name was Alfred Wegener is actually lifted directly from the textbook. They just weren't into it. And so I grabbed a guitar and uh, kind of that riff I had been just messing around with for a while because uh, I thought it was a really fun riff. It kind of sounded Debo-esque to me. And then the, the laughter in the chorus uh, where the scientists are kind of poking fun at, the, at, at Alfred Wegener's hypothesis. And that was done on the spot just to keep the kids' attention, and it worked really well. And so over the next couple days, they kept asking for it. And I knew these guys from um, you know a band we had played in before. And so I, that's when I first approached us, and I said, hey, you know, like I've got this idea for something kind of zany, kind of they might be giants, kind of Devo, and you know, can we uh, try it out? And it'll probably be science oriented. It'd be like a like a science class on stage. It was just weird enough for me. <laughs> After releasing their music video for Continental Drift on YouTube, the song has now surpassed one million views. You have kids in elementary school, a lot of middle school students, but then we get contacted by college professors who use it in their college courses, particularly like introduction to geology or even geography. Ray, along with drummer Dustin Jordan and Ryan Mosley playing bass and keyboards, discussed looking for more ways to showcase their music, so they reached out to Wind up your radio, I'm Dr. Demento, who started his eclectic music show first on the radio over 50 years ago. Now on the internet, his show showcases novelty, comedy, and unusual recordings. We weren't sending it out to get reviewed or anything like that. No. We just were like, we just got to get it to Dr. Demento because we, we knew he was still doing a show online and everything. And I, I couldn't think of anybody else who would even play it. And then uh, he came out to one of our first shows and he's, he's just been a huge supporter of what we've done. On two of their music videos from their Cosmigos album, the Meebs, as their fans call them, came up with dance moves to demonstrate different scientific principles. Bassist Ryan Mosley says that he is the band's best dancer, especially on The Geologists Are Coming. You know, among the band, I'm, I'm kind of known as the best dancer, so I have to, during that song, I'll, I'll bust out these geology dance moves, which, you know, really unlocks that next level of, of creativity when you're able to just freestyle geology dance moves in front of a crowd of screaming fans. I mean, I, to say it's surreal would be an understatement. Some of their biggest fans have been real working geologists, like some of the members of the American Geophysical Union. They started passing around one of our songs, emailing it to each other, and yeah, they like to listen to that one while they're out on a dig. Yeah, uh, apparently that's the, you know, you go out on your, on your dig, you, you, you pump, uh, or you bump. Bump. The geologists are coming, bump. yes. Drummer Dustin Jordan, who learned how to draw from his grandfather, is also the group's artist for their album covers. When you give Dustin an idea, it just immediately runs with it, artistically speaking. So he started doing sketches right away, and then uh, he came up with this, this green little blobby thing with a giant eyeball. And <laughs> that's pretty much I draw 
everybody's album covers and t-shirt designs and I always feel like it's it's best in our own hands than leaving it up to somebody else to kind of interpret the ideas that we have. Early on, the group created an intricate mythology about their origins. For decades, humans have transmitted radio wave signals deep into space. Little did they know, advanced amoebic life forms on the planet Pluton received these transmissions with great wonder and curiosity. The Crutonian Council voted to send their musical ambassadors on an expedition to this distant world to investigate. These are the scientific and musical adventures of the amoeba people. Our mission here on Earth is to um, learn about Earth, its science, its dance moves, and then transmit those findings back to Crouton, our home planet, in musical form. The, the public, the public loves us. I mean, um, they miss us because we're, we're a huge deal. touring act back at home. Much of the band's music is based on geophysical principles with lots of fact checking. But they also write songs about the unsung heroes of science. We're just the right guys to make science cool. When a college professor contacted the band to suggest writing a song about cartographer Marie Tharp, Hedgepath and company were ready to take the plunge. So what she did was she discovered um, at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean there's a rift valley. And rift valleys imply that the plates of the Earth are moving in different directions. They didn't call them plates then because plate tectonics hadn't really been developed. But, um, and so uh, that was the idea that her colleague was like, you've got to be joking. you know, like. Come on, Marie, that's, gr that's girl talk. One of the band's favorites from their fossil record release is a tune about the largest mass extinction event in our planet's history, and it's performed with an upbeat melody that only the amoeba people could pull off. Chicxulub is a, it's such a crazy song. It's hard to play live, it's really challenging. The recording of it is tons and tons of tracks of percussion, it's, it's just, a, it's fun. The band members love playing live, and at several planetary society events, they had the opportunity to work with the ultimate science guy, Bill Nye. Ryan recalls how he first met Nye, hoping to give him one of their music CDs. And I'm like, uh, Mr. and I, uh, science music CD, uh, bye. And then just like peeled out of there. And he uh, called after me, he's like, thank you, amoeba person. And when he sees us, he goes, he, 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 he looks at our uniforms, he goes, oh, it's you guys. <laughs> Since 2010, Hedgepeth has been living two different lives, teaching science and songwriting for the Meebs. He inspires young minds and writes songs about some of the giants in science, who have inspired him. And I always think about Carl Sagan, one of my heroes, who back in 1980 and then many years uh, beyond that and many books that he's written, has encouraged specifically teachers to give children time to ask questions uh, because that's the hallmark of human creativity in, and scientific wonder really is like it starts with a question. And the mysteries of the stars and the conundrum that is man. Yes, conundrum that is man. Heroes come in many forms. And for the members of the Amoeba people, fellow Lakewood resident Barry Hansen, a.k.a. Dr. Demento, has been a huge influence. There's so much of, of his story that is, as a music historian, that's incredible. Yeah. And that's just setting aside the Dr. Demento character. I mean, and then there's Dr. Demento and that show, which mm -hmm. that's how we came to, to know of him. And Ray, Dustin, and Ryan wrote a special song for Barry. Uh, I gave you dominion over the frog, the snake, the pine, and the pinion. And to their surprise and delight, he agreed to sing the lead vocals. And it's called Get Demented. And so it's kind of, we wrote it with his character in mind.
But it does have an amoeba people theme to it because it's about um, unavoidable. What, well, yeah, about uh, what, how we're, you know, kind of not doing a great job of taking care of our planet. The sun will burn out in a, in a mere five billion years. The earth by then will have cried a gazillion tears. And then the turn happens here, but that's not something to be lamented. Yeah. The answer to that in this case, uh, since nobody seems to want to um, uh, solve that these these issues, let's let's get demented. The earth may soon be So I was very honored that, that, that they wrote a song, especially for me to sing. The band has influenced students from middle school to college, and even a few college professors, giving them all a fun way to share their love for science. We get a lot of emails from science students, yeah, who first heard the song um, or watched the video when they were in middle school and um, then are sharing it with their other science major friends. And that, that is just, you know, that, that's pretty cool. That's um, because, you know, we, we've, we've had working scientists tell us, hey, I, you know, I heard about this video and I was like, this, this is so cool, and they're sharing it with people. We've been doing this since 2010, and I think we're having, it's if not better. more fun now, yeah. we're, ha we, we're either having as much fun or more fun than we ever have. On the band's upcoming album called We've come to science rock your party. Meeb fans will hear songs like Science Geek, Go Little Sputnik, and Ham. And if these tunes are anything like what they've done before, get ready to chuckle, giggle, dance, and learn a little bit about science along the way. It was a cold December morning back in 1898. A brave young fossil hunter was a pondering his fate when he heard there was a ship that was about to leave the dock. There was room for him if he could somehow beat the clock. Oh, Bottom Brown. A scientific expedition was about to raise its sail. And this young fossil hunter knew he couldn't drag his tail. It was bound for Patagonia, a place without renown. But the fossils that the rumor seemed to call to Barnum Brown. Ooh, Barnum Brown. 